If you think about the decision that, or the results of the decision to go in, what would that mean to the whole mobile industry? If you combine the current market share of Android with the market share that Nokia could deliver to Android over the next couple of years, it's a very large number. A very large number. One could believe that the mobile industry thereafter would be some form of duopoly. Apple and Android and some smaller players, with Nokia contributing substantially to the Android ecosystem. That's what the selection of Android could have meant in the context of our decision making. Now, think about the other aspect of this strategic consideration. And that is, a decision to go Windows Phone creates a very different dynamic. By moving in the direction of Windows Phone and partnering with Microsoft, we create an environment where now Windows Phone is a challenge, where we have created, as we said repeatedly, a three-horse race. For Microsoft, the consideration of Nokia of going in that direction had value, significant value. So think about that. What was really going on over the last several weeks and months is not only were we considering the internal options, but we were also considering what was the right decision for Nokia as a company being suited by two of the world's largest technology companies who both recognized the critical importance of having a strong role in the mobile ecosystem. We went through that process and indeed were suited by both parties. Now, we obviously made the decision to go Windows Phone. We made the decision for a whole variety of reasons, but I think to truly understand it, you need to understand a bit more about how Microsoft viewed this opportunity to ensure that there were three ecosystems, and not only two, excluding them. In fact, the Nokia and Microsoft partnership around Windows Phone goes far deeper than that in many different ways. And I want to share with you a bit more of how this construct works. So you have to think about it in terms of what Nokia, in addition to the royalties, what has Nokia contributed to this partnership? Well, we're contributing a number of things. For example, we are contributing a variety of services, of capabilities that will be used by Windows Phone uh, manufacturers, including Nokia. So we're contributing things like the capabilities around OV Maps, around the OV Store, around new advertising opportunities related to local services. We are contributing that to this partnership. So that's one example. We are also contributing to this partnership the specific technical and hardware and differentiating capabilities that will ensure that Nokia Windows Phone products are great products. So services, great technology, but there's also something else we're contributing, and it's what I mentioned at the beginning. We are contributing the swing factor. We are contributing the fact that we have created a challenger in Windows Phone, a significant contribution to the ecosystem. We're bringing substantial market share in that direction, the world over. They are contributing a dependency. We are clearly dependent on Windows Phone as we go forward. But now they become very, or they're placing a very significant bet on Nokia for the delivery of the location-based services. So that's a good <laughs> But there's another element that comes out of this. We're contributing these services, and in exchange, we are also receiving a new source of revenue a new and additional way for Nokia to make money, and that is related to advertising. We have not had an advertising source of revenue, yet clearly in the world, the business models are evolving such that advertising has become very important. And so that's part of the contribution back. But there's one more that's worth noting. During our investor briefing, there was a slide where we had a single line with a little green check mark saying marketing and other investments or something like that from Microsoft to Nokia. I think some people interpreted that as 
as something that would be measured in the millions or tens of millions or something, as most marketing transfers of value are. In fact, when you look at all of the value that we're contributing, the unique nature of what we bring to the table as part of this transaction, in fact, the value transfer to Nokia is measured in the B's, not the M's. Overall, royalties, OPEX reductions, significant unique contribution from Microsoft, or from Nokia, from Microsoft, new sources of revenue, and a huge monetary transfer to recognize our unique value. So before I talk about the transition from Symbian to Windows Phone, I want to talk a little bit about the strategy that we've chosen. It's our opinion, and the opinion of many others, that Windows Phone is an exciting, contemporary, and modern UI and platform. We are the partner who will bring innovation in design and hardware to make great mobile products with Windows Phone. And we've already started. We've had teams working together in some pretty interesting places, like Reykjavik, for example. And they are working together, our technical teams are working together next week to solidify the timing of the first Nokia Windows Phone product. So that means that I cannot today tell you exactly when is that time. But my boss has told me that he would be much happier that time was in 2011. So one of the things that um, we also saw is that people got kind of excited about some early concept renderings that got out in the last couple of days. You might have seen these. Well, I want to share with you one more because it helps to give you some insight into what can come out of the collaboration between Nokia's design team and the Microsoft Windows Phone design team that has already begun. And I'm really looking forward to sharing with you more of this great collaboration in the weeks um, to come. There's a second thing I wanted to address um, here, which is the, I think, the misunderstanding about what it means that Symbian is a franchise platform. So what that means is that we will be making significant short-term investments in the Symbian platform so that we and our customers can harvest the value that the Symbian platform offers. So what does that mean? What kind of investments are we going to make? Well, first of all, we will be making investments in a series of new devices that will be launched in the months to come and beyond. We will also be investing in the hardware platform, in the, in, in the, the hardware platform in terms of gigahertz plus processing capability, as well as significant improvements in graphics speed. In addition to that, we will be making investments in UI improvements that will give a whole new, fresh look and feel to the Symbian UI, making it more accessible to even more consumers. And those improvements will be delivered via a series of software releases and software updates in the coming weeks and months. So, these investments are what give us the confidence that we will be able to ship volumes of Symbian devices in the coming months and years. In addition, it gives us the ability to carefully manage the transition between Symbian and Windows Phone. 